Your Honor, please do not send me to prison. The defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and set punishment at eight years. Hold on to the truth that I did not commit these crimes. My conscience is clear. They each thought they could bend the rules, manipulate the law, and abuse their power without consequences. Never in my worst nightmare will I imagine being responsible for toxic death. The drugs were there. I did not put the narcotics there. Unfortunately, they're about to find out in the worst ways that no one is above the law. The defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and set punishment at eight years. Once hailed as a guardian of the streets, Daniel Ken Holtzclaw's journey from a promising athlete to a disgraced former police officer is a stark reminder of the fine line between protector and predator. Take a seat at the Oklahoma County District Court, where former officer Holtzclaw is about to be sentenced on a series of sexual charges. Working as a patrol officer, the initial glimmer of Daniel Holtzclaw's abuse of power surfaced in December 2013 when he arrested a woman for drug possession. The woman, hospitalized and handcuffed to her bed, would later testify that Holtzclaw forced her to perform oral sex, believing it was the price of her freedom. This incident marked the beginning of a calculated spree of sexual assaults that lasted over six months. He drove me to a, to a school, and uh, I was tired of the school in the back. And he opened the door, he told me to get out, and pull my pants down. Holtzclaw's method was systematic and predatory. He used his authority to run background checks on women with outstanding warrants or criminal records, exploiting their vulnerabilities for his gain. His targets were carefully chosen, women from the poorer, majority black portion of the city whom he believed would be less likely to be believed if they reported his heinous acts. It got to the point to where I raised up my shirt, okay, can I go now? Can you let me go? Why didn't you report it? I didn't think that anything would happen. The abuse continued unchecked until June 18, 2014, when Holtzclaw's actions finally caught up with him. Jenny Ligons, a 57-year-old woman with no criminal record, was subjected to Holtzclaw's advances following a traffic stop. Unlike his previous victims, Ligons did not remain silent. She promptly reported the assault, setting off an investigation that would uncover the depth of Holtzclaw's depravity. I'm like, what? You want me to take my pants down? Then he like, Yes, I said, oh no, sir. I said, you're not supposed to do that, sir. The trial of Daniel Holtzclaw commenced on November 2nd, 2015, with the former officer facing a staggering 36 charges, including sexual battery, assault, forcible oral sodomy, and stalking. As the trial progressed, the atmosphere in the courtroom was charged with tension. On December 10th, 2015, Holtzclaw was found guilty on 18 counts, including four counts of first-degree rape. We turn now to the stunning sentence tonight for a former police officer from Oklahoma City, convicted of assaulting several women and the grandmother credited with cracking the case wide open. The sentencing phase was equally dramatic. On January 21st, 2016, Holtzclaw was sentenced to 263 years in prison, a de facto life sentence that ensured he would spend the rest of his days behind bars. If you thought this was quite messy, wait till you meet our second cop, a man sworn to uphold the law who would become the very embodiment of a dirty cop. The drugs were there. I did not put the narcotics there. Zachary Wester, a former sheriff's deputy in Jackson County, found himself in the eye of a storm, one of his own making. Entrusted with the badge to serve and protect, Wester instead spun a web of deceit, planting drugs in unsuspecting drivers' cars during routine traffic stops. His actions, a gross perversion of justice, would however lead to an unexpected reckoning. Zachary Wester's journey into law enforcement began with the promise of a career dedicated to public service, but beneath the surface of this seemingly commendable deputy lay a darker reality, one that would soon come to light most shockingly. Tonight, 119 cases have been dropped in Jackson County. This after video footage of a former sheriff's deputy allegedly planning evidence was released. It was the summer of 2018 when the first threads of suspicion began to unravel Wester's facade. Internal affairs investigators, following a trail of inconsistencies and complaints, uncovered a chilling cache within the deputy's patrol car. Drugs meticulously concealed and ready to be planted. This discovery was the first domino to fall in what would become a scandalous expose of Wester's activities. You know what that is? No, sir. You don't know what that maybe appears well, to be? Meds or cocaine? Okay. As the investigation deepened, body camera footage revealed the damning truth. Wester, with a sleight of hand that would make a magician envious, was caught on camera holding baggies of drugs before even beginning his searches during traffic stops.
The gavel sounded, and the courtroom fell silent as the trial of Zachary Wester commenced. The former deputy faced a litany of charges, a staggering 67 in total, including racketeering, official misconduct, fabricating evidence, perjury, and false imprisonment. We're supposed to set the higher standards and the allegations that are made in this case uh, will be tried. As the trial unfolded, the prosecution presented a damning case, bolstered by the harrowing testimonies of those whose lives had been upended by Wester's deceit. Among them was Teresa Odom, who recounted how Wester had stopped her for a minor traffic violation, only to claim he discovered methamphetamine in her purse, a discovery that he planted. It is yogurt, sir. I'm a... Okay. It's how, yogurt. How about it's... this, sir? That is not mine. No, sir. Okay. I'm not going to ask you any no, direct questions. I'm going to read you your rights first, okay? Odom's vehement denials fell on deaf ears, and she was thrust into a nightmarish reality, her credibility shattered, her time with her grandchild stolen by a conviction that would later be overturned. The drugs were there. I did not put the narcotics there. Although he kept insisting he was innocent, Wester was eventually sentenced to 12 years, 6 months, and 8 days, a tenure to be served in the stark confines of the Florida Department of Corrections. Our next cop was about to commit an even more shocking crime, eventually leading to an unexpected prison sentence. On count one, I hereby sentence him uh, to 25 years in the Department of Corrections. And on count two, I hereby sentence Mr. Raja to 25 years in the Department of Corrections. Nauman Raja was apprehended after he murdered Corey Jones, an African-American. Although he claimed self-defense, the truth, as revealed by a chilling audio recording, painted a starkly different picture. Take a seat at the Palm Beach County Courthouse, where sentencing for this controversial case unfolds. In the early hours of October 18, 2015, Corey Jones, a 31-year-old musician and housing inspector, had been alone and on the phone with AT&T roadside assistance when Nauman Raja, a police officer not in uniform and driving an unmarked white van approached him. I-95 exit uh, PG, um, southbound. Okay, is there any, um, hold on, let me write southbound down. Is there any buildings, landmarks, anything like that, that I could use to pinpoint your address? Within seconds of Raja's arrival, six shots rang out, three of which struck Corey, fatally wounding him. Raja later claimed he had identified himself as a police officer and that he shot Jones in self-defense. However, the audio recording from Corey's call to roadside assistance told a different story, as there was no evidence that Raja had identified himself. Nooman Raja was charged with manslaughter by culpable negligence and attempted first-degree murder with a firearm. As the legal proceedings advanced, the case against Nooman Raja was not just about one man's actions, it was a symbol of the broader issues of police accountability and the value of black lives in encounters with law enforcement. This should have never happened. My uncle should still be with us alive. We are supposed to be protected by the police. Not shot by the police. On March 7, 2019, Nooman Raja was convicted of the charges against him, and on April 25, 2019, Palm Beach County Judge Joseph Marks sentenced Nooman Raja to 25 years in prison, the sentences to run concurrently. On count one, I hereby sentence him uh, to 25 years in the Department of Corrections, and on count two, I hereby sentence Mr. Raja to 25 years in the Department of Corrections. While Raja's crime was based on hate and anger, our next cop would go ahead to commit a series of sexual crimes that earned him the title of one of the dirtiest cops ever. Makes a total of 36 life sentences. The minimum term you will have to serve before the parole board can think of releasing you is 30 years 239 days. The arrest of David Carrick, a former Metropolitan Police officer who lived a double life as a serial rapist, sent shockwaves across the nation. Once a guardian of the law, Carrick turned into its most devious violator, exploiting his badge to prey on the vulnerable. His facade of authority crumbled when justice caught up with him, leading to a sentence that reverberated through the hallowed halls of Suffolk Crown Court. Carrick's journey into law enforcement in 2001 after he joined the Metropolitan Police and was then selected for the prestigious 
armed parliamentary and diplomatic protection team, a unit responsible for safeguarding key locations and figures within the capital. However, beneath the surface of this seemingly commendable career lay allegations of domestic abuse hovering around him. The sheer volume of the depravity carried out by David Carrick would be notable on its own, but that he did so while a serving police officer makes his crimes all the more horrific. Carrick's descent into criminality was marked by a predatory use of dating platforms like Badoo and Tinder. He sought out women in Hertfordshire, England, using his position as an armed officer to ensnare them with a false sense of security. The abuse Carrick inflicted was not merely physical, but psychological. He degraded his victims, employing physical abuse and even subjecting them to the humiliation of being urinated on. And would often use his position to gain the trust of the women he would become his victims. Some were beaten, others were locked in cupboards for hours without food. The turning point came in October 2021, when another woman, emboldened by the sentencing of Wayne Cozens, another Met officer from the same unit as Carrick, reported that she had been date-raped by Carrick a year earlier. Her act of bravery, coming forward after such a high-profile case, was the catalyst that would eventually lead to Carrick's downfall. I want him punished for what he did to me, because I honestly feel he's taken 20 years of my life away. On the 2nd of October 2021, Carrick's facade finally cracked. Officers arrived at his home in Hertfordshire, and as the body-worn video captured his arrest. Initially, Carrick's stance was one of defiance. He pleaded not guilty to all charges, a move that seemed to echo his earlier statement during his arrest. David, do you want me to come naked like this? No, just understand you're under arrest, no, okay? No, no. In a dramatic turn of events, Carrick changed his plea to guilty on 49 charges, including 24 counts of rape, relating to 12 female victims in December 20. 2022. Well, uh, Mrs. Justice Chima Grubb there handing down a sentence of 30 years, 239 days uh, before David Carrick can be considered for parole. The sentencing hearing at Southwark Crown Court began on the 6th of February 2023. The gravity of the moment was palpable as Carrick received 36 life sentences with a minimum term of 30 years plus 239 days. Our next cop went from being a protector to a perpetrator after shooting at two men following an overzealous display of duty. Giovanni Crespo, once a guardian of the law, now stands condemned by the very system he swore to uphold. This is the story of a chase that turned deadly, a moment of decision that spiralled into tragedy and the stunning downfall of a Newark police officer. Take a seat at Essex County Court in Newark, where Crespo faces the grim reality of an unexpected prison sentence. On the night of January 28, 2019, Giovanni Crespo, a patrol officer, was about to have the routine fabric of his duties torn apart, propelling him into the annals of infamy. Gregory Griffin, behind the wheel of his vehicle, was halted for speeding, a minor infraction that should have ended with a citation. Wow. Sir, turn off the vehicle. Turn off the vehicle, sir. Turn it off. Instead, it was the glimpse of a handgun within Griffin's car that transformed the stop into a high-stakes pursuit. Crespo, arriving as backup, was thrust into the heart of the action. As Griffin's car roared away, Crespo's body camera, a silent witness affixed to his uniform, was activated. When Crespo finally caught up with the suspects, he shot at them, a judgment that would claim the life of Gregory Griffin and leave his passenger, Andrew Dixon, teetering on the brink of death. I shot him in the head. Crespo had intentionally shot at a vehicle that bore no immediate threat, according to the guidelines set forth for the use of deadly force. A 10-week-long trial immediately commenced, and the courtroom became the arena where Giovanni Crespo's fate would be deliberated. Prosecutors maintained that Crespo showed no respect for Griffin's life, especially as Griffin posed no imminent danger. Whether or not there's a gun in the car, and there was a gun in the car, is not justification to shoot somebody in the back of the head and somebody else in the face. However, his defense team argued otherwise. This law enforcement officer saved lives that night. End of story. Despite the antics of his defense team, Crespo was found guilty of the charges against him and faces up to 30 years in prison. Our next cop was about to face an unexpected prison sentence after his role in the death of George Floyd. Hold on to the truth that I did not commit these crimes. My conscience is clear. 
In a twist of fate that shocked the nation, Tu Thao, a former police officer embroiled in the infamous case that ignited global protests, faced the gavel of justice for his actions that led to George Floyd's tragic death. Take a seat at Hennepin County District Court in Minnesota, where this sentencing takes place. Before the world knew his name, Tu Thao was just another officer in the Minneapolis Police Department. But everything changed on a fateful day in May 2020, following a routine call that spiraled into a scene that would be etched into the annals of history, sparking outrage and a global movement crying out for justice and police reform. On that day, Thao and his fellow officers responded to a report involving George Floyd, a 46-year-old black man accused of using a counterfeit $20 bill. What should have been a standard arrest took a dark turn. As the senior officer on the scene, Derek Chauvin, pinned Floyd to the ground with a knee on his neck, Thao stood watch. Trained in de-escalation and life-saving techniques, Thao was expected to intervene, but he stood back and watched as George Floyd's life slipped away. His trial became a focal point in the quest for accountability, and he was charged with aiding and abetting second-degree unintentional murder. Thao's reaction was one of stoic acceptance as he continuously claimed he was innocent. Therefore, I must obey. You hold on to the truth that I did not commit these crimes. My conscience is clear. I will not be a Judas nor join a mob in self-preservation. Unfortunately for him, this didn't stop the judge from sentencing him to 57 months in prison. After three years of reflection, I was hoping for a little more remorse, regret, acknowledgement of some responsibility, uh, and less preaching. If you thought justice was served, our next dirty cop went from the officer charged with enforcing the law to being condemned by it. You were so into your bravado that you forgot the eye of justice was watching you and recording this disgusting beating, seeing Mr. Dent slammed into the window shield with blood running down his face. Former Inkster police officer William Melendez, once a figure of authority, Melendez's reputation as a law enforcer is tarnished when he crosses the line during a traffic stop, leading to an unexpected prison sentence. Take a seat at the Wayne County Circuit Court in Michigan as the sentencing unfolds. It was January of 2015 when the incident that would redefine William Melendez's career occurred. Floyd Dent, a 58-year-old black man with a history of driving violations, was stopped by Melendez and was then brutally attacked. The once respected officer found himself at the center of a legal storm, with his career and freedom hanging in the balance. It's the video that made national headlines. The man being beaten is about to become a millionaire. Just four months after this happened, Floyd Dent and his attorney have reached a settlement with the city of Inkster in a civil lawsuit. The trial of William Melendez was a spectacle that captured the attention of Detroit and the nation. Melendez, now faced with the glaring consequences of his actions, now offered an apology to Dent and his family. To Mr. Dent and his family, I am truly sorry if this has caused undue hardships in your personal life. However, Judge Vonda Evans, known for her commanding presence, did not mince words as she addressed Melendez. She condemned his Dirty Harry tactics and the excessive force that had been used to subdue Floyd Dent. Her scathing remarks made it clear that the actions caught on the dash cam were inexcusable and that Melendez had betrayed the trust placed in him as a police officer. They say that what you do in the dark will eventually come to light. And yes, it did. It became a worldwide example of what the police is not about, and that's brutality. The sentence handed down was 13 months to 10 years in prison, a range that reflected the gravity of the assault and the misconduct Melendez had been convicted of. Our final case delves into the story of a dirty cop who was caught in a web of theft and tampering with evidence, an act that would forever change the course of his life. Your Honor, please do not send me to prison. In the quiet town of Pike County, a tale of betrayal and downfall unravels as former Sheriff Charles Reeder, once a beacon of justice, faces the grim reality of his criminal actions. Take a seat at the Pike County Common Pleas Court, where we watch the judge deliver the appropriate sentence. Charles Reeder's ascent to the role of Pike County Sheriff was a testament to his dedication to law enforcement. As the highest-ranking law enforcement officer in the county, Sheriff Reeder was at the forefront of the Pike County Massacre, the most infamous criminal case in the county's history, but also one of the most extensive homicide investigations in Ohio. I'm not the most patient person. 
Um, but, you know, we had to just stay focused on, on the investigation. We had to stay focused on that we was working for eight victims that no longer had a voice. The sheriff's visible commitment to solving the case earned him respect and trust within the community and beyond. However, beneath the surface of this high-profile investigation, a storm was brewing. The facade of integrity that Charles Reeder had built as the sheriff of Pike County began to crumble when an anonymous complaint filed in November 2018 set off a chain of events that would lead to his down or Pike County Sheriff Charles Reeder is under investigation by the state auditor's office for, quote, misconduct. It was alleged that Reeder had a gambling problem, tampered with evidence envelopes containing cash seized from drug arrests, took loans from employees, and facilitated improper transfers and auction sales of vehicles impounded by his office for personal gain. As the state's probe deepened, the extent of Reeder's transgressions became apparent. He was indicted in June 2019 on 16 counts, including theft in office. Sheriff Charles Reeder is charged with theft and tampering with evidence. The courtroom would soon become the stage for the next act in this dramatic fall from grace. The former sheriff, who had stood tall and proud in the face of the Pike County massacre, now stood slumped, his posture reflecting the weight of his guilt. As he addressed the court, his voice cracked with emotion and tears streamed down his face as he begged not to be taken to prison. Your Honor, please do not send me to prison. I have run, but I'm not run. I still have a lot of good left in me. But the emotional gravity of Reader's plea could not erase the gravity of his crimes. Again, I beg of you to impose a sentence of community service with the strictest sentencing and sanctions. Your Honor, please do not send me to prison. He had admitted to stealing money from drug dealers, money that was evidence in the cases he was charged with overseeing. Judge Cosgrove, a veteran of the bench with a history of sentencing public officials, was unmoved by Reader's emotional display. Reader was eventually sentenced to three years in prison. It cannot be underestimated the damage that you have caused to the citizens of Pike County, to law enforcement who every day get up uh, face the same sort of stresses that you do. As we reflect on each case, it stands as a stark reminder of the imperative to uphold the principles of justice and equality, ensuring that those who betray their oath are met with the full force of the law they once swore to uphold. Click on the cards showing on your screen for more like this.